Hello and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all well. I hope you've all had a fantastic week and thank you very much for coming over and joining us for another video. So, different bit of scenery. We're actually in my other part of my workshop, which I've classed as my clean shop. Uh, this is where the so-called technical work happens. Technical? I don't know about that so much. But anyway, um, I'm going to be doing something using the CNC for a change. Um, I'm going to be making, or I'm going to try and make, shall I say, I'm going to be making a maker's plaque for a good friend. Um, quite a bit of processing work in it. Um, obviously artwork to be drawn up and designed. Then we've got to create our tool paths and then send it all over to the CNC to be cut out. So I have a piece of oak that's about 220 mil uh, high by 290 wide that I'm going to use to do the basic uh, design on it. And then I may double step it by putting a background on it. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I've got it in my head roughly what I want, but I'm not quite 100% sure how it's going to happen. Um, but like I say, quite a bit of processing. So this may be a one-parter or it may be a two-parter video, depending on how much processing there is in the uh, the way to go. Um, so to do this process, I'm going to be using three different pieces of software. Um, the first piece of software I'm going to use is a piece of software called a light burn, which is more designed for laser engravers. But I actually enjoy using Lightburn to create a lot of my artwork in because I've used Lightburn quite a lot and I know quite a bit about it. I know how to manipulate certain things on it. So I'm going to go use that to create my artwork. Uh, then we export it to a piece of software called Carbide Create. Carbide Create is mainly or solely designed for uh, CNC, uh, router CNCs. And it's designed so you can set your tool paths and your cut depths, picking up what pieces you're going to use or what tools you're going to use to cut certain cuts with and things like that. So, and also you can create your G codes in uh, Carbide Create as well. And then the final piece of software we're going to use is a piece of software called Candle, which is a Gerbil uh, control and software. Both my CNC and my laser engraver have Gerbil motherboards or control boards. So I use candle for the CNC and obviously light burn for the laser engraver. So you're perhaps itching to know who I'm actually making the plaque for. So the guy I'm making the plaque for is Brian of Hartwood Turning. Um, I've only known Brian a short period of time, but I class him as a good friend. Um, he's, he's a very knowledgeable man for the short period of time that he has been turning. Absolutely awesome channel. He comes up with some amazing projects and he always thinks outside the box, which is what we all need to learn how to do. Um, I do believe it's a channel that needs to be watched because he is an up-and-coming YouTube, uh, I wouldn't say star, but I think the channel is going to go a long way. I really do. So, without further ado, um, I've come up with a few designs or a couple of designs. I think I've narrowed it down to the one I'm going to use. Um, so, we'll go over to Lightburn and have a look at what I've come up to. I'll just go through the basics on what I've done and how I've created it. Um, if there's people want more information then I may do a video later on about certain aspects of the video or aspects of the stages sorry and uh, we'll see how we go from there so Brian if you're watching this I hope you enjoy uh, the process of it and I really do hope you enjoy the plaque that you should already have your hands on so uh, let's go to Lightburn have a look at the design I've come up with and uh, I'll just basically talk you through a few bits of it Right, so here we have our basic outlay for light burn. Um, all this section over here is all the controls to the CNC machine, so we don't need to worry about any of those. We're going to basically be just using the, the bits down the side here. So I'll show you quickly the idea I came up with, which is this. Uh, obviously, we need a heart shape because it's heartwood, and then we need the text over the top of it. So this is going to be two different pieces. Uh, the heart will be one piece and then the heart will turn and it'll be another piece. And then we'll overlay those over the top of each other. I'm not sure whether I'm going to raise it and illuminate it or whether we're just going to keep it flat uh, and see what happens. But we'll see what happens as we go into it. You know what I'm like, I sometimes get a bit too technical and a bit carried away, but we'll see what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this. I'll quickly show you how I came up with this uh, design, uh, nothing high tech. This 
the heart was a, a download off the internet um, to give me the heart shape and then the heart would turn was just basic text font in a certain text or a certain font sorry to give me that and then a, a basic border around it so let's go let's get rid of that and I'll show you how I achieved that look so obviously the first thing we need to do is bring in our heart um, like I say I imported a heart from the internet saved it so we'll import that now or the heart should I say Heartwood heart, here we are. This is the one I use, so that's the heart we had. Um, like I say, it took a little bit of shaping and bit, but we got there. And then basically what I need to do over that the top of that is put a text. So it's just a text emblem. And then we'll add our text. So heartwood turning. Let's do it a different way because it's such a big space between. So we do heartwood as one word. And then we will move that to where we want it. We can resize afterwards. And then we'll do another one with turning. Um, benefits of doing two separate, as you see, there's such a big gap between them. Benefits of doing this way, we can uh, move them a bit closer together. So there's our two words. So we'll line them up so they are roughly in the center of each other. Um, we can line those up by doing that to bring them so they're in the middle. So then we'll group them to make them as one. So now we can rotate them to the angle we want and just gently increase the size so we get the size that we require. Now I wanted to make this quite a, a big chunky overhang. This is not going to be exactly the same as the one we've already done, but rough idea. So that is what we wanted. So that's our rough idea. So obviously now if we cut that out on the machine, we're just going to get the letters, but we want a border around that. So we'll select that just the heart would turn him. And then we'll use this option here, which gives us an offset. Uh, I believe I did 10 millimeters on the other one. Maybe a bit more now because of uh, the gap in the middle. Actually, we could move those a little bit closer together would help. So let's just unselect them. Let's just ungroup those for a second. Move them a little bit closer together. Take that a little bit because I don't look quite level. Alright, so move them a little bit closer together, that will give us a bit better option to right. So now we can group those back together. Now we can go to our offset. And now we can gradually increase this until we get rid of those gaps in the middle. So 10 millimeters. So that gives us our basic offset loads of different options here you can play around with but we don't need to worry about any of those so that has give us our basic a border around our heart would turn them now what we can do is that we can just move this heart out of the way for a minute and we can select all that and group it so if we need to move it it moves as one not as uh, two different pieces so now we can bring our heart back in relocate our heart where we want it somewhere there looks good to me so that's our basic how we had before um obviously again two pieces uh to be done from all right so let's open the original one the original one that i did which is slightly different spend a bit more time on that one so uh no we don't want to save it so that's the original one i did so now we're going to export this um, so we can go over to our Carbide Create. So the way we do that is go over and uh, export. So here we have, so I've already done, saved it, exported it there. So heart would turn, export it, save as yes. So that's basically all the work we have done for um, 
the light burn. So we're in Carbide Create. Now we are ready to import our artwork. So we'll import our artwork, artwork turning. Here we go. This is all our artwork already ready to be set for our tool paths. Obviously the heart is a, uh, a cut. Um, it's going to be a complete shape to cut out where the heart wood turning is going to be uh, the letters are going to be engraved and the outside is a cut so what we need to do is we need to separate these two items to make life a bit easier um, to separate to work on so what we're going to do is click on the heart we're going to move the heart over so we've got them separated now now that's our two different cuts this will be our base this will be our top piece so as we're going to cut it out in two different pieces, we're going to have to do it as two different uh, G codes. So the first G code we'll do, we'll do the heart word turning. And then the second one will be doing our heart. But what we can do is because this is going to take a bigger board if we leave it like that, we can rotate that a little bit just to square that up to um, make that a little bit uh, less wasteful on the materials. So that'll be like that. And then we can move it a little bit. So we get it. Um, no, not size. We want to move it. We want to move it. There we go. So we can move that down a little bit. And hopefully we won't waste so much material. So now we've moved those. We can now um, go over and set up our toolpaths. To do your tool path for the, the, the lettering, I'm going to make my life a little bit easier by just moving this out of the way for the time being. And then I'll be able to select all that and set that as one tool path rather than individual tool paths for the, the letters. So we'll go and do our tool paths. Um, we'll select the heart we're turning, which I highlight it, advanced V carve. Now we don't you know with this you can put in uh, a, a first profile to take out a lot of the a lot of the um, waste material but we're not going to um, I'm just going to go straight in with the 60 degree V carve piece um, it says there starting depth at zero which is obviously what we want uh, maximum depth for 6.6 .6 millimeters I don't want that I only want a couple of millimeters so I'm just going to put two millimeters in there and that will bring us in that one now what that does is it should just go in and give a fine detailing all the way around it shouldn't be too deep we don't want it massively deep two millimeters is more than enough and uh, we're going to do a test on a piece of softwood anyway and see how it comes out before we're actually going to use yoke so it's given me an estimated time there are 16 minutes for that tool path which isn't too bad at all so that's that done so now we need to do is bring whoops we need to go into design we need to bring this back to where we want it uh, roughly where we had it which is there's somewhere maybe a little bit less than that just zoom in a little bit move it down just a little touch oops too much so this is the trouble when you uh when you move things they don't quite go back where you want them but as long as it's close all right so that's where we want it so now we need to set this piece up here to cut this out so back to the tool path um on that one we're, we're, we're going to cut that out with a different piece uh we're going to be cutting that out with uh just a normal straight piece so an eighth piece is big enough we want it on the outside we're going to cut it on the outside of the line not on the inside because that'll make it smaller um thickness of our material is 20 millimeters so we're going to change this to 20 millimeters that's how deep the piece of wood is so we're going to start cutting at zero right through to 20 millimeters now we want tabs because if not when we start turning these this is just going to fall out so we're going to want a few tabs in places just to give it a bit of security so it doesn't jump out and jam the piece up and damage the piece so we just put a few tabs on there uh, tab width five millimeters by two millimeters high uh, then we'll just sand them off and uh, clean them up afterwards so that's the, the out cut or the cutting it out should I say so uh, okay that now that's telling me it's gonna take 31 minutes to cut that out um, because obviously it's hard wood and we're only using a small piece that's only going to go through about half a mil at a time so uh, that will take a little while to cut out but you know it's gonna be quicker than with a with a with a saw 
So that's that one done. So what we need to do now is do our tool cut for our heart. Um, so we will now do the same contour cut on the outside with the eighth piece again. Um, and it's only cutting through uh, 1 million, 1.27 millimeters at a time. Again, we're going 20 millimeters. Uh, we're going to do some tabs because we don't want that bit jumping out and damaging our piece again. So we're just going to put a few tabs on it just to hold it in place. Again, we're going to go five millimeters wide by two millimeters deep. And let's like say we just sand them off at the end. That's it. That's as easy as that. So that'll be okay. So that's going to take 26 minutes to cut out that one, but that will only be, um, that's just the back end plate. So, um, that's it. What we need to do now is just save that as a G code. But what we can do is because that bit and that bit are separate, um, this toolpath here, we can disable that one and save this one as our first cut. So makers, oh, where's the makers? Makers. So we call this heartwood. Wood cut one and then we'll enable that one disable that one disable that one and then we'll send that as heartwood cut two and then I'll know which one's which so that is that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this and I'm going to do a test on this one. And then uh, when I've done a test, I'll come back and show you. And then we'll progress on from there. So I've just done a test, quick test on a piece of soft pine. Uh, cut out. I had to increase from 2mm down to 6mm because it wasn't quite deep enough. Because we're going to fill this with resin, coloured resin. Uh, or colour, anyway. Um, so we need to increase that a little bit. So that's perfect now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the oak ready for my text. Um, I've set a temporary camera up over the CNC so hopefully you can catch um, the video in of the cut and the hardwood turn now and the outside surround. So then we should be ready to do the heart. So I'll get the oak cut and I'll meet you guys over at the CNC machine. So we're starting off our CNC machine on our data corner which is here. And what we need to do now is to tell the machine what height we're working at. So we will move the head up and then we'll move the machine over so we can use the Z setting. And what this does, this works out a rough, or the height between that, the top of that and the top of the machine, or the top of the workpiece. itself so there you go that's where I worked out it works out that is 25 millimeters so it knows that there's 25 millimeters between the tip of that piece and our work piece so we've imported our artwork in so I'll just quickly show you that Here we are in our candle software, which is what we use to control the CNC. This sends over the G code to the controller to tell the CNC what to do. As you can see, we've inputted our heartwood turn in profile. So we're now going to send this over to the CNC and watch it cut. So we've done our basic text. So we need to return the machine back to home. What we need to do now is do the cutout. Um, so we need to we need to um, change our bit. 
So we'll change our bit. This time we need to put in a eighth piece or one eighth bit. So that um, we can do the cut out. So we've got to change the collar because that was a quarter inch piece. So this is our one eighth bit. making sure we've got enough meat to go through the piece. So now we should, we can import our second cut. What this should do is because we haven't lost our origin or our starting point should cut out perfectly where we want it the only thing we have to do is we've got to set our tool piece again because um reset that height so that's it that's our height set so now back over to our candle software this is where we've imported our second cut as you can see here this is going to give us our overall shape ready to be installed into our base once that's all cut out and ready to go so i've got a piece of soft pine in here now i'm going to start cutting out the heart um, what I've done is I've programmed it to cut this shape out so this should slot into the heart that's my thinking whether that'll work or not I'm not 100% sure um, so let's set it going and uh, let's try it So I've just quickly sanded this up to uh, 240 grit, just took the rough edges off, there's a few little bits where the tabs have gone, been left on. Um, so that's the heart all done. So I've prepped this as well, I uh, gave this a sand up to 240 grit, then I gave it a coat of uh, spray sand, sand and sealer to just seal the wood and then I've just sanded it back. Um, up to 240 again not sure whether I'm going to lacquer it or whether I'm going to oil it I'm not 100% sure yet so that fits nicely in there like that so there's our heartwood turning sign so now we need to decide what we're going to do with the heart um, I'm thinking colour it uh, I may colour it with a red so that's a deep red hearty colour and then we can either lacquer it or just seal it just to make sure it's obviously good and um, so you don't color don't come off of it so that's my thought there then leave this bit natural so then I could just lacquer this uh, to get a shine on it or do we just oil it to keep it looking like that because I quite actually like it looking like that so I think next stage is is to color the heart uh, get the intrinsics out and give the heart a nice color and then we'll give it two or three coats sanding in between and then we'll see what it looks like um, but I'm happy how it's come out it's come out really really well so it's all done are you ready to see what it looks like well here it is my heart would turn in heart <laughs> um, I haven't actually lacquered it I know all along I said I was going to lacquer it but I've changed my mind the reason being is I've given both of these about five coats of spray sand and sealer and they're actually got a nice sheen to them. I quite like the look of them. I think if they're too shiny and glossy, they're not going to look quite right. But I think with this, it actually looks just right. It's got that nice little sheen to it. So I gave the heart a coat of ruby red, but I thought it was too dark. So what I did is I gently sanded it back to give it like the distressed look. And then I gave it a coat of burn, uh, no flame red, sorry which is a slightly lighter red so as you can see you've got like the two different shades of red in it so it's, it's sort of made it look like it's a bit oldie woldy so that's made it look really nice um, and then the actual heartwood sign I've just I gave it three coats of sand and sealer 
rub the back with a piece of 400 grit and then just give it two more light coats and the other one has gone over it with a scotch brite just to take any little bits of dust that was stuck in it so yeah it's turned out really well i really do i've really enjoyed doing this um so it's a bit of you know it's a, still an art still craft but we've used some different technology to what we would normally use which is nice here yeah, because it just proves that there's more than one way to make obviously something else obviously you could have done it with a router cut all this out of a router you could have cut it all out of a router but i'm lazy cnc machine sits here that's what i'm going to use so hope you've enjoyed i uh, hope it's been something a bit different for you guys to watch um and if you have then please leave me a comment let me know what you think uh if you have enjoyed then please smash the like and share button if you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed what you've seen then please consider subscribing and if you do subscribe don't forget to hit that notification button then you'll be up then you'll be notified for all my upcoming lives and videos so and we hope to see you on the next video or next live so with that guys um brian should have this by the time this video goes out so i hope he enjoys it i hope he likes it um so we will see what brian has to say about it um, other than that thanks for coming over catch you on the next one take care speak to you soon